Three, two. One of the first things I do when I pick up my daughter from school is I ask her how her day was. Nicolette, what happened today? Well, um, at lunch, um, I was sitting down just eating my food and I saw this girl that was a little distance in front of me sitting on the curb. I see her almost every day. She sits in the same spot um, and she sits alone and she's super shy, glasses, short brown hair and she was just sitting there with a big smile on her face drawing in this notebook and I know she has this notebook every single day and it's always with her. She always seems happy when she's around it. I saw this group of guys kind of ganging up and going like, they went over and just took the notebook right out of her hand, ruining her drawing. And then they were like, oh, come and get it, come and get it. Cause they were much bigger than her. They were like eighth graders, I think. And they were tossing it around and she was like, please, no, please stop. Please give it back. Stop, stop, seriously, please don't. I think they probably bullied her before, by the way. She was like, not again, please stop. And so I went behind him and I took it out of his hand and he was all, and then I gave it to her and I was like, here you go. And she was like, thank you so much. And the guy was like, what do you think you're, you're doing? And I was like, what do you think you're doing? Is that your notebook? And he's like, no. And I'm like, then why are you touching it? And so the girl, um, she had the notebook in her hand like this and the guy hit the, the, one of the guys hit the notebook and it fell in the trash can behind us. And then a bunch of other guys came and dumped their lunches, their lunch trees um, in the trash can. And I just saw any life drain out of the girl's face. Like she literally went numb and her eyes filled with tears and she just started bursting out crying. And so I went and I was like, I'll help you. So we like kind of dug through the trash and tried to find the notebook and we found it. And she was wearing makeup so her mascara was like flooding down her face. So I was like, let's go to the bathroom. So we cleaned her up and then she was like, she would not stop crying. And I asked her like, why? Like, why is this notebook so important? She's like, read the fir first page. And it had said, um, to my love, Allie, I hope you can fill your dreams and your sketches in this book, Love Mom. And she said that her mom had died about a year, two years ago. And she started crying again. Um, so I was like, why didn't you tell the office or one of the teachers or even a counselor? And she was like, well, they said they'd come and beat me up. And then I was like, oh boy. So I was like, let's go. So we went to the office and then I told them what happened because she didn't want to tell them. And then they were like asking for a description. So I said what they looked like. They had a hoodie on or whatever. And then they went to um, go find them, I think. And then she would not stop thanking me. She was like, thank you so much. Nobody ever stands up for me and I don't really have any friends. And then I got her phone number and then she was super happy and that made me happy. That's a great story. That was very sweet of you to stand up for something. Did you feel brave when you did that? I felt like I want to punch them in the face. <laughs> um, I wasn't scared because I there were like other people around, so they probably couldn't hurt me without anybody seeing. Well, I think it's a great thing you did standing up for her, and I think uh, I'm very proud of you. Number one, and number two, I think that your actions will help her be brave next time, because sometimes we just need someone to stand up for us and and make us feel like we're worth it. And I think you did that for her. So that was definitely a good deed. I'm very proud of you. That's the story. <laughs>